All right, everybody, welcome back to Madhouse Unfiltered, episode four. We are now uh, now sponsored, presented by uh, MJ Printing and Graphics in Kernersville. So give them a call for your next, uh, uh, for your racing t-shirts, any graphics you need and everything like that. I'm here today with Mr. Smooth, <laughs> Ronnie Clifton, man. Uh, so what you, what, what you been up to these days, Ronnie? I just uh, working on race cars and helping people and uh, trying to get mine ready one of these days. Might run a few laps. There you go. So let's, let's go ahead and start from the beginning like, like we always do here. So how'd you get your start in racing? Shoot, well, yeah, I started running go-karts for me and my cousin, Jeff, and uh, we ran a few couple years, you know, and then I had a few, few wrecks, and my dad said, uh, get out of these go-karts. You're going to get killed. <laughs> and uh, so he talked to my wife about me running and racing and uh, talked her into it to all the road cage and fire extinguisher and how safe it was. Yep. Finally talked her into it and uh, going to Bowman Gray, 1988. That's awesome. So, what, what was your first time behind the wheel of that of a big of a full body stock car? Well, we just weren't running that season at the stadium, but we went to Caraway. Mm -hmm. They had a race before the stadium stadium opened, and we decided to go there to shake it down, see how everything went. And we ran the Caraway in the limited limited stock, mm -hmm. which running about mid pack, and they had a wreck and. I drove right into it. <laughs> Great first race. And coming to pits, I was all bummed out. You know, I said, I don't know if this is for me or not. Mm -hmm. And my dad said, you know, stuff like that's going to happen. So I went to the stadium and and uh, adapted pretty good there. Right. So how how soon after you started there did you find did, did you find success? Did you start winning? I think we're in our, we're in our fourth race. Fourth race. Yeah, wow. a, yeah <laughs> I know. Uh, we had a good car, though. We had my dad's, I mean, he's... He's so smart, yeah. you know, and then uh, we bought a car from Dink Osborne and Mark Knott set it up and he was really good, you know, and uh, I had a bunch of guys hit me on the car. Mm -hmm. Mark Morgan was went to school with me and we were best friends. He, I mean, he worked his butt off on my car. Then we had a couple guys come in, you know, younger guys come in to help us too, yep. Todd and uh, Chris. But we had a good time and uh, yeah, we started out pretty good and I said, man, we got to win. I think we got three wins that year. Really? Yeah. You started in the street stock division. Yep, started right? in the street stock, and then uh, we ran there. And, sorry, you started, you started in 88, right? 88, 88 yeah. 88, right. And so in 1990, you won your first street stock championship. Yeah, yeah. How was that for you? That's pretty cool. Uh, we were running pretty tight with a uh, – I can't remember his name now. But we was going in the last race, almost tied. Mm -hmm. And uh, I called Martin on, and I says, can you help me out? Cause my car was not right, yeah. and I like to win this thing. He said, "Bring it over here." So I took it over, and he went front to back, and this. He said, "Just bury it," you know. I said, "No, I can't bury this car. I push." Yeah. He said, "No, trust me." So I think I started second, and the guys ran with for the points floor on pole, mm -hmm. and I went down there. He led up, and I stayed in it, and uh, it turned, <laughs> and we won the race, and he finished second, and we got the championship. That's awesome. Yeah. So. Um, so you got that first ch track championship in 1990, and then you went through the 90s without winning another championship. You didn't win another championship yeah, yeah. until your sport, first sportsman championship in 2002. Yeah. So what was was that a challenge for you going that 12 year hiatus of without winning a championship? Or yeah, well we ran good. I mean, I always ran you know decent, and uh, we finished second the points a lot. Yeah. Always something always happened. Uh, we get off a little bit, and I talked to Gary Freeman, and he'd get me back right, and my dad get me right, and we just always had a bad, couple of bad finishes, or something always happened, and then I set out 2001 with back surgery, mm -hmm. and the doctor said I could run the very last race, mm -hmm. come back and won that race. I was all right, you know. Yeah. Then 2002, that's a championship came, you know. I said maybe I said that surgery. A long time ago, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, we got it in what, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, all, eight, eight, and nine. Two thousand two to two thousand nine. Yeah, and uh, I don't know how we did it. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of luck, you know. Right. A lot of good guys helping me. I mean, Eric Melton, that joker would go from my car front to back, yep. and then he start again, do it again during the week. We was on the car every night. I mean, my wife sometimes got tired of it, but she understood. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to run good, you got to work on the car. I That's mean, right. preparation is 
95 percent of everything you know and that's right we had a good car and then had a good team i mean todd Weaver, white joker was awesome you know <laughs> i mean he, he was in he's 10 years younger than me but he was smart you know caught on fast yeah and yeah that's awesome so at one point so i know you ran a streak so what what year did you start running in the sportsman division uh she went 90 92 92 okay yeah now left the stadium in 93 did you went to run some late model okay run two or three years and come back okay my dad said you'll be a what you, a big fish in a little pond <laughs> yeah. or a little fish in a big pond right I was going to be a big fish. <laughs> so I'm going to build you a car. I said, okay, and you built me a car and, and uh, it's an offset car. And man, I think it was just, it turned so good. I mean, yeah. I never, never felt that. And uh, Philip Gann mm-hmm. builds dirt cars. He built it for us. Oh, really? He owned a dirt jig and he put a square tube on it. Oh, okay. And my dad went over there and showed him what he wanted and he always puts his input in there because yeah. he knows what he wants. You know, he's, <laughs> he's my backbone, you know? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so going back to the Sportsman Championship, so, yeah, so you started in 2002, and just from there you went on a tear. Yeah. Eight, champ- eight championships in a row. 30, you won 33 races during that stretch, and you also got four top gun awards right, right in the row, 2002, three, four, and five. So what was in, what was in your water? <laughs> what, 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 was, what was the key... Do you know what your oh, yeah. success was there and there? Because everybody calls you Mr. Smooth. So you must try, have figured something out. I don't know. I always try to <laughs> run them the right way, you know, because yeah. I figured if I run them right, maybe they get behind me to run me right. Yeah. Uh, some, I mean, I might want, I want to win. I want to win, but sometimes seconds was better than winning yeah. to rough a guy up and make him mad at you because he's going to get you back, yeah. you know, tie your car up. But we never had no, uh, nothing happened to the car. Everything stayed with it, you know. Nothing fell off. No engine problems. My dad built a great engine. Yeah. I mean, we, was, we got beat one time. He went, he got depressed, went home, and he went to bed, got up next morning. So I, I slept on it, and I know what I need to do. Yeah. And we come in, took the, started working on the exhaust a little bit, and had the gaskets, and yeah. picked it up, a tenth. <laughs> I mean, that's a good, yeah. he can go to sleep and pick me up a tenth. You know, I was excited. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, mean, I, was, I kept, I always kept my eyes on everybody and talked to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And I always try to make sure the car turned. Yeah. And my dad kept me horsepower. And uh, I figured if if you make a car turn, it takes less horsepower. Mm-hmm. And if you got the horsepower and make the car turn, then you can do both what you want to. You know, you can go to the outside yeah. and uh, just treat them right, you know. Yeah, there you go. Helped a lot of people race against me. <laughs> I just helped one car. He asked me a question, I'll tell you that truth. Right. You know, and I mean, I, about four or five cars racing in the same division I did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Barry Edwards, he always helped him, and he's like a big brother. Yeah. Him and Kyle. And, and uh, when he might come to pits, I'd always tell him I'd straight, shoot him straight. <laughs> I wouldn't, I mean, I want to beat the guy, not the car. Yeah. You right. know, it's his fun. I and mean, we, we had a good group of guys back then we raced against. Yeah. They might treat each other right. Right, and you, you talked about your dad a little bit too. He built uh, he built a lot of those inline six cylinders. He did. Uh, do you do you know how many wins or sure. things he has as an engine builder, or I is don't. there too many to count? <laughs> he's got several. You know, he's got mine. Yeah. Zach's, uh, Barry Edwards, Kyle Edwards, Stephen mm-hmm. Barrier, uh, Johnny Ardner, Ryan Nelson. Uh, wow. Just name a few. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Larry Eubanks Jr. built his motors. I senior. Oh, yeah. built his motors. He won a street stock champion over there. There you go. Did build his motors. Uh, he built a lot of engines over the years. That's awesome. So just a quick shout out here to Justin Mincy because he gave me he gave me a bunch of these stats. Oh yeah, uh, he's good. Yeah, he's awesome. So uh, so the Clifton family as a whole, y'all have two hundred and twenty three wins wow. at the stadium. And you hold seventy one of those. And you and that's the seventh most all time across all divisions and your nine championships tie you third most all time right behind Ralph Brinkley um, and you're only, you're only behind Tim, and, Tim Brown and Burt Myers as far as championships at the stadium so what does it mean to you to be well in that conversation and uh, it being the greatest of the greats at the stadium yeah. well I'm not the greatest <laughs> I just had a good good time doing what we did and I mean I mean it feels good then once you did that mm-hmm. and uh that you had the people around you that could help you. 
and they treated people the right way. And they always, I mean, I go to any pits at the stadium and talk to somebody and feel like when I leave there, they won't say, there's that butthole. They say, that's Ronnie. You know, I like him, you know. <laughs> I won't be liked. I mean, I want to help people out. I, don't, I just like to, you know, leave a place knowing that I was a good person and try to do what I could yeah. to help people. That's awesome. So, after, well, let me go this way here. So, in this, we had the first sports and hunter lapper coming up here in a couple of weeks. It was supposed to be this weekend, but they moved it because of yeah. the rain. Um, and surprisingly, throughout your years, you only have two wins in the hunter lapper. So, how hard was it to win a hundred lapper back then with those screaming uh, six cylinders? It was tough. I mean, you had to stay out of trouble. Yeah. And, you know, and, uh, but as MR was brought to A game, mm-hmm. to them, we didn't have many back then. They had one or two, maybe. Yeah. And MR was brought to A game, and I mean, you go out there and you had Gene Pack. I mean, shoot, that guy could drive a, drive a sportsman car. You know, you had Tommy. Yeah. Uh, Mike Robertson was good in them big races, mm-hmm. and uh, David was good. We had a lot. We had a lot of competition, and on a big race, they shined, you know. Right. And uh, so I, I think I always, you know, I had something happen or didn't want to make something happen the wrong way. Yeah. And I might finish second a lot, probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably did. Yeah. <laughs> so and you did a little stint in the modified division. I did for a yeah. while. So what? What? I mean, were you just tired of winning championships in the sports and wanted to go back and <laughs> go up? Or <laughs> No, uh, I think that year, Whitney, my daughter, yeah. she's wanting to race, so I put her in the street stock. Yep. And I told Zach King moved to sportsman. Mm-hmm. And I was going to step out. I was done. Mm-hmm. I was going to help them too. And my crazy brother, Michael, said, drive my other car. I said, I don't want to drive it, you know? Mm-hmm. He said, go ahead, you do good. I said, he talked me into it. And I got in. I always, always liked driving the modifieds, but... I felt like we was lacking a little bit in the modified division. Yep. I mean, I enjoy working on them. Uh, try to surround my, myself with a lot of good people. Never could hit on what I need to hit on. I uh, felt like I was lacking a little bit on horsepower sometimes. Not exactly horsepower, but power range. Yeah. Our, our motors would come off the turn and then halfway down straight away, like it quit. Mm-hmm. And had to have a real good hounding car to, even, to run with some to, Powerhouses. Uh, we had several chances to win. A uh, few eager people behind me didn't let me win. Yeah. <laughs> I know they wanted to win too, but they took, did it the wrong way. But uh, yeah, yeah, we had a good time. I just finally got burnt out on it. My wife told me the last race I was going, I was going to run one more time. She said, "Why are you racing for us?" I mean, I like racing. She said, "Ronnie, you ain't racing two years." I said, "I've been on the track racing. No, you have not been in this racing for two years." I said, my wife's always honest with me, you know. Yeah. So I, think, I guess I need to quit. Because if I'm not racing, I don't need to be out there. If I'm out there riding. Yeah. So I just hung it up, started helping Zach, you know. And, and uh, then I met Kurt, and I helped him a little bit. And been helping him for last, it's like a one-time setup. Yeah. And he's been here for seven years. <laughs> uh, yeah, we we become real good friends, you know. Yeah. Try my best to help out when I can, and uh just help everybody I can help, you know. Yeah. I'm go to the pit, somebody's got a question. If I can answer it, I will. And right. Try to help them out. If they need something, I got it. They're stairs. Right. You know, uh, I make a lot of spare parts I can give. <laughs> but I, yeah. Yeah. Enjoy it. That's awesome. And so what what year did you, what year was that when you finally hung up and uh, focused on your kids? Pre-COVID. Pre-COVID? Okay. I was going to try to run that following year. Okay. I can't remember when that was. But I had the car ready and, I guess you more or less taught me out of it. Yeah. Okay. And then I run a few races here and there. And right. Just never felt the same. Yeah. And you mentioned it a little bit too. Yeah. So your your kids Whitney and Zach they started racing. What, did, when did they start racing at the stadium? I think 2010 when I moved up to Modified. Okay. Whitney ran street and Zach ran the Sportsman. Yep. Yeah, and okay. uh, I think Zach ran. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And uh. Yeah, we all three ran over, and we, uh, Zach done pretty good. And we sort out cars he wasn't used to because he was trying to drive my car, and I, I, he didn't like what I liked. Mm-hmm. So we ended up, I think, went through two or three cars. Finally got one he, he liked, and uh, he started running well a couple years later. And then yeah. Whitney, she come on that first year pretty decent. Uh, had a hard time changing gears. Mm-hmm. I thought I'd change gears in the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was laying down, sitting down in the 
inside the car and tell him, change, push clutch, push gas, push clutch. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, we, uh, she done real well. I mean, she was getting the hang of it and uh, she had to quit, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That uh, Bristol came. Yeah, Bristol came, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Bristol, she's something else. Her and Carson both. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, we, uh, I guess my most, uh, dang, I'm getting emotional. My most proud moments, I guess, of Wilkes Mm-hmm. I think both of them there. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Still <laughs> something else, subject. <laughs> <laughs> but they done, both of them done well. Zach was, I mean, he qualified on the pole and the clutch come out. Mm -hmm. And Whitney, she ran about mid pack. She's, man, she started passing cars, and my dad was going, go. <laughs> He was, he was into it, and I was over there, just yeah. emotions going yeah. wild. Right. And so, did were you nervous for them to follow in your first footsteps, or did or were you responsible for giving them that push? I, mean, I wanted them to have, be do what they want to do. They both ran well in go karts. Yeah. And Whitney ran real good in go karts. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know if she wanted to run a race car, and I was just, yes, he did. And I said, okay, we got your car. And uh, like I said, I was gonna step down, give Zach my car. And Zach was running a sport, street stock. Yeah. He had the year before that. And uh, so I moved him to Sportsman. And so I said, you have Zach's car, and I'll, Zach can have mine, and I'll step back. But it didn't work like that, you know. <laughs> yeah. But we had a good time. We that's, did. That's good. And then Zach even won the Sportsman Championship in 2015. He did, yeah. Yeah, what was, tell me about that season. What was that, that like was, for you? Uh, Nerve wracking season. Yeah. <laughs> the last race, uh, yeah, I think the exhaust pipe come a little loose. I was afraid it was going to fall out, mm -hmm. but it didn't. And he won the championship. And, yeah, I cried like a baby, you know. <laughs> Mr. Emotions. Uh, and that was, a, that was special. I, was, I mean, that's probably greater than mine. That's awesome. To me. Yeah. And then you mentioned it too. You got your, your grandkids are racing now too. Oh yeah, Bristol and Carson. They're running the carts and they're all, they're already winning races. Carson won the other week. Yeah, yeah she's Carson, doing great. Yeah, yeah. that uh, was that was the first time at the champ cart. Oh yeah, yeah. man, she's a she's a, loves it. I mean, <laughs> five years old. Yeah, and and, uh, and she just stepped right in that thing, held it wide open, and uh, everybody loves her. She got a lot of personality. Yeah, and uh, I mean she, I mean she won. The heat race, they've done to a four wheeler in front of us, and now we're going to do the slow you down to start. Yeah. Well, she thought she was supposed to run that speed the whole race. <laughs> and the guy behind her running her down back past her. And Zach said, You got to go faster. He said, Daddy, I was going as fast as Jeff was going with the four wheeler. He said, no, you gotta go. That's just a parade lap. When he throw the green flag, you go wide open. And she about, she straight away the guy. <laughs> she got out and started dancing. I won, I won. Oh, <laughs> everybody's laughing at her, and yeah, she's uh, she got a lot of personality. That's good. And Bristol, she she does good too. I mean, she was uh, leading the other week, and we got to teach her how to pass. Mm -hmm. And the guy running down past her, still finished second. Yeah. And uh, both of them, I'm proud of both of them. I throw both of them. I says, it don't matter if you win or not, as long as you're having fun. Yeah. And when the fun's over, we'll stop. But as long as you're having fun, enjoy what you're doing, we'll stay doing it. We're doing this because y'all want to, not because I want to. Right. And uh, yeah, it's fun watching them. And then, and knowing, knowing y'all, Parker's gonna be racing in a few years. Oh too. yeah, He's, he will be. Yeah. He <laughs> will keep up a couple of his cars covered up for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he's gonna. Yeah, he's gonna be good. I think. Right. And now, and we we talked we touched on a little bit at the, at the start, but um, nowadays you're just in, you're just in the pits and you walk around helping people yeah. with their setups and everything. I know you, I know you've been helping. Uh, Bryant Robertson out a little bit with his modified. Yeah. Um, is you keep saying that you love to help people and everything like that. Is do you, do you see yourself doing that for a long time or? Yeah, I like. I mean, you know, I helped uh, Jordan last year and over the winter, and uh, you know, I'm sort of there if they need me. I think they got it. You know, right now, and if they need him, if they get in a bump, I'll be there to help them out. But I think they're gonna. Try to do it yourself. Yeah. And uh, so I had a little bit of free time. So I, I don't know. I saw Brian over there and 
He wrecked the other week, and I had a couple of parts. I said, you, need some, you know, do you need anything? Mm-hmm. He said, well, I need a spindle. I said, well, you need it. Tell me so I take it. I brought it, it over there, and I took it to him. And uh, he said, man, I need somebody to help me. He set my car up. He says, I got a couple guys that want to show up. They hadn't showed up yet. I said, well, if you ever need me, I'll be there. I'll be glad to help you. So he called me and said, uh, hey, man, uh, you interested to help me a little bit on my set chassis? I said, yeah, I'll be over on Wednesday. Mm. And went from the front to the back and uh, got all the angles right. Uh, a few of them we didn't got real late, so we didn't, a few things we didn't do. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, he didn't get the race, his rear end come out. So I went back in last week, he got his rear end put in, and I, you know, checked some more angles on the front, got them right. Mm-hmm. And uh, whenever I started morning, the car was pretty good. That's so it. he's a little tight in the middle, but we're going to do some, I'm going over at night to work on a few things I think we need to do, because I'm going to be here on the weekend. But uh, yeah, he's a good guy. <laughs> uh, we've been knowing each other forever. Yeah. Never thought I'd be helping Brian, but heck, fire. Man, we laugh and cut up, have a good time. <laughs> he's a good guy, he is. That's awesome. And he's got some good guys working with him. Old Jason, he's yep. he's a smart and he'll do anything. He'd definitely going to do this. Yeah, we'll do it, you know? Yeah. And uh, I don't want to go and take over. I want to be, be a part of the team. And, right. But I, when I do something, I, I like to tell somebody I'm, what I'm doing and show them why I'm doing it. And uh, I call myself a starter kit. <laughs> I get you started. I know the basics. Yeah. When you get down to the nitty gritty, bump stops, stuff like that. Yeah. I had to get somebody like Dylan or somebody to help you. Right. I'm sort of, they might call me old school. <laughs> I am old school. But I take old school and run with the new school. Yeah. Yeah. So touching on that a little bit. So what's, what's the biggest difference from the setups and the cars from the 90s and early 2000s to today's cars? Wow. When I first started racing. <laughs> Well, we had a thousand pound spring on the left front <laughs> and uh about eight hundred on the right and straight up shocks. I had some old I think there was a I think it was Bill Steens or no not Bill Steens, there's uh they call them QA ones now. I can't remember what it used to be. It was straight up like a six, seven, a four and a five. Yeah. And uh we we didn't have no scales. Dad take a socket and put it on a jack and sit and jack the rear center the rear end up. Mm-hmm. And your right tire come off the ground. When the left tire barely come off the ground, he rolled a, a big socket, that one inch socket, and he rolled. And if it rolled up and barely touched it, mm-hmm. you're good. <laughs> we didn't set it up. I mean, uh, we didn't know what set it up. We didn't know scales or anything. The first time I set it up on scales, I think Mark not set it up. Mm-hmm. And then we've all set the scales. And uh, yeah, we. And that was back then, you know. And then we started doing split valve shocks. Mm-hmm. Afco's and adjustable shocks and with a uh, and Gary showed me a bunch of stuff on that Freeman. Yeah. He's like a like a second dad to me. I might get him buying I call Gary and he say cigar and say, Well he said, What you doing? And I tell him what I was doing. He says, What do you think? I tell him what I think and he say he wouldn't come out and tell me, you know, and then I finally tell him and he said, There you go. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, he always was there. Yeah. From day one. Yeah. So, just to start kind of wrapping it up here, just one more kind of big question for you. So, who was the most influential to your success coming up? As far as who I watched and want to be like? Yeah, or like, yeah, whoever, who was your most inspiration or whoever like helped you the most throughout your years? Shoo wee. That's why two guys that's helped me so much. My dad, I mean, I. I was going to be like my dad. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess Gary Freeman. Yeah. Gary, you know, I miss him. Mm-hmm. So, uh, do, you have any, do you have any other funny stories? <laughs> yeah, I got one funny story. Yeah, anything you can tell on camera. <laughs> we, had a big, we had a big race one time in a stadium. They, back then it was 35 laps. And I won it. And uh, I thought I'd done great. I come in the pits, I was all excited. And my dad said, hey, boy. I said, yeah. He said, if you don't start... Them restarts a little fast, them boys gonna turn you around. He said, You're going out, bud, bud. I said, Daddy, I won the race. He said, Yeah, you need to be better. I said, Okay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, every time I win, he'd always say, You need to do this, you need to do that. I said, Okay. And they would brag, but then one day I heard him in the background bragging, somebody I said, Damn, my dad does brag on me every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's been, always well, has good times, yeah. That's good. So, and, 
You said you're trying to get this car ready. You might go yeah. out and do a few practice sessions. We've done a lot of stuff to this car uh, over the off season. Mm -hmm. um, worked on the front clip because there's always a little push in it and uh, changes stuff around on it. If I ever get time to work on it, <laughs> I've been helping everybody else, which I don't mind. Yeah. And I, I might go out one Saturday morning and see how it does. We're going to put a bump on it. Mm -hmm. See what this old man doing a bump, 61 years old. <laughs> Never had a bump, but I'm saying, well, what a bump's all about. It might be like, I'm bump no more with no big fat woman. You never know. <laughs> I don't know, but we'll try it. And, and uh, you know, I might just practice. Yeah. I might try it a race. But uh, right now I'm having fun doing what I'm doing. Awesome. Yeah, I do yeah. enjoy that. I'm glad to hear that, man. So, well, I appreciate you being on. And I know everybody's going to love this episode. I mean, <laughs> I mean everybody's, been everybody's been talking about it, waiting for it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just give you this opportunity to thank whoever you need to thank as far as family, mm -hmm. partners, whatever you need to. I thank my wife, Michelle. <laughs> I mean, she's always been there beside of me 42 years. I mean, yeah. She put up a lot of a bunch of junk, bunch of hard times, good times yep. through racing and life. And she's always there for me. She is. And uh, my dad, you know, he's my backbone, you know. Yeah. And uh, Randy Mendenhall, Mendenhall Best Control, been with me forever. Went to school with him, mm -hmm. and uh, he, every year he's like, you know, can I help you? I mean, he's a good guy. Yeah. Don't find no fighter. <laughs> and uh, I've had a bunch of sponsors over the years, been stuck with me pretty good. Yeah. Him and Jay, Mark Joyce, mm -hmm. he's the best. Yeah. I mean, uh, he helps me out a lot. Always That's has. That's good. I mean, them guys are great. They are. <laughs> I can Mark, I don't know if I take my decal or not. We stuck it on and got it crooked. <laughs> he's like, I'll come on and fix it for you. I said, thank you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm not very good at this stuff, you know. <laughs> but him and Corey come down and they make it look like a million dollars, you know. Right. They're good. Yeah. That's good. They are good. Awesome. Well, yeah, I uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. Again, this is Madhouse Unfiltered, now presented by MJ Printing and Graphics. And um, next episode, we've already got our next guest lined up. It's going to be Mr. Charlie Curry in the Stadium Stock Division. So be sure to tune in for that one, and uh, we'll see everybody at the next one. Appreciate y'all.